I want people to blog more, and that includes me. And the way that I've gone about making it more fun for me to write on my own blog, which is this, by the way, is by just sitting down and thinking about an editor that I would really like to have myself. And the more I started thinking about it, the more that I realized that my editor really doesn't have to do much. And you can actually build one yourself these days quite easily. Now, the reason that it's been easy for me to build this has to do with the setup of my blog, which is somewhat typical if you have a static blog. You've got some sort of a source folder, typically. Inside of that, there's some sort of a post folder. And then let's say you've got post one. Inside of that, you might have screenshot one.png. You might have screenshots two. And eventually you would have some sort of an index.md file. This would be the markdown that you would write. And then you would have some sort of a script that would take all of these folders and it would move that into a site folder or a public folder or what have you. You would still have all of your posts. You would also still have all of your images. But the main thing that's different now is your index would now be an HTML file with styles attached and tailwind, maybe all that good stuff. So given that we have some sort of a build step that goes from here to here, and uh, this can be a custom script, but it can also be some sort of a Jekyll-like static file generator. But assuming we've got this step, the only thing that my text editor would really need to do is it would just need to be some sort of a command line app. In this case, I have a make command, make write. And this starts up a little Flask server that gives me a writing session. And the moment that it's done, it can just add a folder here. And the moment that you recognize that it doesn't have to be more complex than this, you also start to realize that it really becomes quite easy to make something bespoke. So the thing that I made is basically this one little UI that sits in this Flask server. And the moment that I give the thing a title, it can immediately make a folder like this. And then whenever I move things into render, it will automatically just append it. And this is now the way that I write all of my blog posts. I no longer use a text editor. I really just use this one browser app. And this is what it looks like. When I type make write, it starts up this Flask server. And let's get started by saying, hey, uh, there's a new blog post over here. That's gonna be the title of this blog post. And from here, I can just start writing markdown as I'm used to normally. So I have some sort of a title, maybe I have a subtitle somewhere. Nothing too crazy. And you know, I can do code, yay, exclamation point. And you know, things like quotes, These all these things just go ahead and work. But there are some bells and whistles that I added though. So a typical thing that you might do is you might refer to another post. So you might have something for more info, check here, right? Like that's something you might write. And then here needs to point to the other site. What I can do is I can just hit paste. And whenever I highlight text and when I then hit command V or paste, then it just naturally assumes I'm interested in pushing a link, which is behavior that you also see in GitHub or in Slack. And this is like a microsecond of time that it saves me but this is the one thing that I really need. And all of the standard text editors don't do this, but it's okay, because I can make my own. And there's some extra things that I can do from here too. So I'm on my blog now, and what I'm just gonna go ahead and do is I'm just gonna make a screenshot. I think this will be good. On my machine, I've got this app called CleanShot, which moves the screenshot to the lower corner over here, which allows me to edit it. But the main thing that's important here is that I can click and then drag it in. So I can think maybe this needs to go like under the title or something. When I do this, we can see that the image automatically got added. It's shown here in the preview. But what you can also see is it wraps it around a figure tag with a figure caption. So that allows me to do something like, look at that bird. I'm able to just add enough context to whatever image that I've added. And it's a detail, I know, but I really love the fact that I no longer have to click and drag from a folder into another folder and then go into the edit mode of the index markdown file, make sure the file path is correct, and then manually wrap that with all of this HTML stuff. I, I really like the fact that this is always how I want to do it, and it's just there, and it's built in, and it's always available to me, and it's just super nice. But from here, this is also only the start, because what I can now also do is I can maybe select a little bit of text, and I might think like, ah, I, I want to have a bit of a change here, and uh, command enter is a shortcut on that one because that selected text can also be sent to an LLM. And also here, again, the sky is really just the limit. So I can maybe write Spanish just to make it clear that I would like to turn this into Spanish. Then I get this sort of annotation interface where I'm able to say like, okay, is this good or not? And I don't know, maybe I want to try this again. Eventually I can accept it. And then the text updates and I can just move on. Now the moving parts, one more time. I can start a new document uh, by also adding a new title over here. This will become the slug by adding dashes, by the way. And this is also the name of the folder that is going to be added. And then nothing really happens until I upload this one file, because the thing that I'm uploading needs to be going into that right folder. This Flask app then also knows where the file is and can therefore also render it in the preview, which is nice. 
But the one thing I haven't done yet is I've not saved the text that is over here. And if I'm done writing, if I'm content with what I've got, uh, then I can go ahead over here and I can go ahead and hit render. And the moment that I do this, then what you see on the left-hand side over here is written as an index.md file in the right folder. And under the hood, this is all a command line app. It's called draft. What you can do is you can point to the folder that needs to store the other folder. So it's all nicely configurable. And I gotta say, it's a small little detail. It was a nice evening of coding to get this to work, but oh my God, is it just so much more fun to write blog posts now? I actually feel like writing multiple times a week now that I've actually got this. And I'm pretty sure that this flow is not gonna work for everyone, but I can say that this flow works very well for me because we can vibe code quite easily. I am also very comfortable saying that if I wanna change this, I can. And maybe if you wanna have more fun stuff on the internet that's written by humans, we should also have people like you, yes, you, build something like this. Not only is it a fun exercise, but it is genuinely motivating to build your own tools such that you actually do an action more. And the perfect example for that was this, like the, the simplest writing tool that does a few things that I like ends up being the tool that I really love using the most. And especially because I've got full control, I really can't see or think of any other way of blogging now than to do it via something like this. If you're looking for some extra inspiration, definitely feel free to check out my GitHub repository. The command line app is called Draft. It is a tool that I really just intend to write for myself. So don't expect me to maintain or listen to lots of issues or anything like that. This is really just something for me. But I do like having to code out there because it can be a motivating example for someone like you to try something out like this for yourself. It is built on top of LLM by Simon Willison, which also means you can attach multiple LLMs if you're interested. And also a fun fact, if you wanna maybe just play around with this locally yourself, uh, you don't even have to install it inside of a virtual env. You can just call UVX with this one liner over here, and it's just basically gonna do a somewhat stateless install. It's gonna give you this one session with the tool ready to go, so you can go ahead and explore it. And if you then end up never using it, it's not like you've installed it in a virtual env, you have to throw it away or something like that. Hopefully this sounds like fun. The main point is not so much to brag about this tool. The main point is, to consider building your own tools for yourself. Doing that is just the best.